Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Latika, Associate Vice President at IAMEI. It gives me immense pleasure to see so many delegates who have joined us in huge numbers from across 50 countries to view the largest virtual global fintech fest organized by Fintech Convergence Council of IAI and NPCI. This conference is presented by Department of Economic Affairs, Ministry of Finance and Reserve Bank of India, and powered by Amazon Pay and brought to you by WhatsApp and Google Pay. Here we have our esteemed panelists who would be discussing their vision for Fintech consumers of 2025. I would like to start by introducing our moderator, Katie Prasad, MD and RVP India and Sarg Sendes. Hi, Katie. Our esteemed panelists, Mr. Vikas Bansal, Director, Amazon Pay. Mr. Sivashish Chatterjee, Co-Founder and Joint MD, DMI Finance. Mr. Heyman Gala, Vice President and Financial Service, PhonePay. Mr. Anish Achutan, Co-Founder and CEO, Open Financial Technologies. Guys, it's a rare opportunity to have such a great experts with us. I would request all the delegates to keep sending us their questions. Please mention the speaker whom you want to answer. Without any further ado, I would like to request Katie to take it over. Thank you very much, uh, Latika. It's really real pleasure to moderating such a, a esteemed panel. Uh, real privilege. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, just before we set the context, um, I just want to talk about something that I've learned. Uh, about fintech industry and something that's very common and and relevant for today now fintech industry has in india has grown significantly at about 87 percent the country has emerged as a leader in the fintech adoption um and uh, as far as the findings are concerned uh from global fintech adoption index uh by ey you know once only made up startups this sector is now welcoming established companies public private sector banks awareness of um, you know financial technology is immense you know, with, with about 99.5% consumers now familiar with the fact that fintech platforms are available to make payments and transfer money and many more. You know, even more important, I just wanted to reference, uh, you know, Inc. 42 report. There are over 2,800 fintech startups in India. There are more than three unicorn in the club in the fintech industry. There is close to seven billion dollars came as um, you know investment into the in, into the into the businesses. Now that's actually a fifty four percent kegger. This is actually I'm talking about um, twenty eighteen, and I'm sure this has grown significantly. And and more importantly, there are a lot more changed in in you know in the last three months. Uh, and what I've learned is uh, the dis the disruption or a transformation, whichever way you want to look at it, whichever the lens you want to look at it. Uh, it, it everything is condensed in the last three months, um, and that's because we are in unprecedented times. Um, that basically gave opportunity to accelerate transformation, availability of technology to in the hands of consumer, and we have super interesting, exciting, um, you know, panel topic. It is a consumer at you know in about twenty twenty five, but we should talk about a little bit about. I'll open up the panel by asking, um, you know, starting with Anish. Uh, if you can give us, you know, view about COVID, you know, it's unprecedented. It impacted all of the businesses. But what do you think COVID has impacted on the fintech industry, and has it changed consumer behavior? Um, you know, if you could give your view on that, Anish, please. You're on mute. Sorry, you're on mute. So yeah, Katie. So personally, from uh, my experience, as well as uh, from a point of view of open, what we have uh, in general seen is like, even though COVID is unfortunate, as we all know, but it has been really good for the fintech industry. The customer preferences have actually changed a lot. For example, a lot of this tier two, tier three small businesses are now have started adopting digital technologies. They are looking at ways in which how they can actually automate their finances, how they can actually save costs, how they can actually track their receivables better. They are adopting more digital payment tools. And uh, earlier, those businesses who never thought about going online uh, now started looking at tools or like online store builders or like even tutors going looking at e-learning tools. So th these are actually opportunities for the fintech in a very positive way this could actually create opportunities for uh, lending companies even though lending is completely stopped right now probably for the next few months but it's actually bringing opportunities because you get more access to alternative data uh, from this uh, uh, because of this adoption and the change in perceptions 
Uh, it would have otherwise taken probably a year or two to actually reach this level, basically. So, uh, and across that, like lending, like banking, like payments, I actually see this as actually a very positive and, uh, uh, you know, uh, very, uh, the adoption has been, I really believe it's actually good for the, you know, the fintech industry as a whole. And I spoke from the SME side, but I, I'm sure that is the same thing that is actually happening on the consumer side as well. And especially because of contactless methods, people are more preferring contact digital payments over cash. And uh, as more and more merchants become or SMEs become digital, the end customers would also like automatically get adopted to digitals. So this is my view on the COVID. Brilliant. Thank you. And Hemant, if I can come to you with the opening remarks, um, because like I said, we've got to address the elephant in the room, that is COVID. And and, and I think in the last three months, the economy really survived because of um, all the work that this community is doing. Um, and I want to get your view, uh, Hemant, from COVID impact and consumer behavior currently. I think, yeah, like you said, right, uh, it's impacted everyone and every businesses across. But, uh, you know, there are some fundamental changes that it also is bringing in, you know, from a consumer's perspective, it's really a cycle of bringing in change in the consumer behavior. Uh, it has really expedited the adoption of digital in several ways. People are paying more, paying digitally. Uh, people are trying to learn and become more self-reliant in, you know, paying their bills, doing their recharges, making offline payments. They understand, you know, there is a high level of need and awareness to you know adopt to digital payments and this is not just really you know limited to just tier one and tier two we have seen massive adoption in tier three and tier four towns and cities it's actually accelerated the entire learning curve for customers in so many ways that you cannot even imagine so i think yeah you know while it has impacted there is a lot of positivity around you know and opportunities for fintechs to solve for a lot of problems to solve for how you know it's on us to really think how do we add value positively in customers life on everyday basis what more use cases do we really open up so that you know they can uh you know leave basically they can transact safely and more conveniently so yes it's changed behavior in a big way it's opened up new frontiers it's accelerated the adoption of digital in a big way brilliant thank you shiv uh, can i request from opening comments uh, uh around COVID and impact hi katie hello everyone uh, lovely to be here uh, I would I would echo exactly what Anish and Hemant have already said, but what I would emphasize here is is that I think COVID, as both of them said, is accelerating some trends. Right, so there is uh, there is a sense there is a question being asked: How disruptive is it? How will, how is it going to change consumer behavior? I don't think it's changing consumer behavior so much as accelerating what was already in progress right so you have you have long term trends that are already in place that would have happened regardless of covid right so whether or not covid had happened we would have had greater and greater digital adoption except that may, what we would have seen over a five year period maybe we are seeing over you know a several month or a one year period so my sense is that the the impact of covid is trends long term trends that were already in place are getting accelerated whereas the true disruption of changing a consumer behavior is is not something that that i personally am expecting to see so if consumers are not going to head in a particular direction maybe for a short period of time they will behave differently because of covid but once covid once the covid effect is gone those those changes are going to be temporary and are going to, going to fade away whereas the long-term trends are going to, going to get a lot more compressed and and be permanent brilliant thank you Shiv. um because I want to bring you in um, and uh, could you give us some opening remarks, please, on, on the elephant in the room, which is COVID. Yeah, uh, thank you, uh, Katie. So, hi, everyone. So, uh, you know, I echo what uh, just Shiv said. Uh, I think uh, there are two ways we can look at a crisis, right? Uh, one crisis is that it's a, it's a downer, you know, things are not working. Uh, or the other way to look at uh, any crisis is an opportunity. And I feel like there is a huge opportunity here for us as a fintech industry. And and I would say, uh, you know, just picking up, there are a couple of things here uh, that are really profound and going to stick uh, for a long period of time, right? One is digital was already started. And as uh, other panelists said, it has accelerated that. The second part of it is the uh, contactless. So earlier, you know, Indian consumers were more about, you know, face-to-face, and I want to meet and I want to touch and feel before I do these things. 
But what we are realizing is that there is a huge acceleration of contactless, whether it's a contactless payments, whether it's contactless products and services and delivery, all of those things are, are accelerating more than what we expected. So I think this is where we uh, as an industry have an opportunity to how do we really now leverage tech and, and machine learning and other capabilities to provide those experiences that are fully digital and that are fully contactless. And I'll give you one example or data point here is that uh, you know we as Amazon Pay have a multitude of payment instruments and we recently started uh, video KYC through our partner bank. And what we realized is that you know when we gave a choice to customers between a physical uh, KYC or a video KYC, more than 75%, uh, you know, though the technology is very nascent, 75% or more were picking up video KYC, which shows that customers are now looking for contactless solutions. So uh, that's that's really key now for us. The other last trend I'll say is. Even now, because we went through this crisis, it also realizes people realize the importance of protection, the importance of you know health, and you will see a lot more uh, focus on people wanting to protect their wealth, people wanting to protect their family, people wanting to protect their assets, and then this would be a huge boost for our beside everything else to our insurance overall industry as well. So. I think uh, this is an opportunity, though this crisis is no good for anybody, but I see a silver lining or, uh, here for all of us. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, brilliant. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Vikas, for the perspective. You know, Anish, let me bring you in. Um, you know, I think you touched upon a very important aspect in your opening remark um, on the SME and startup world. I want to pose this to you. Um, you know, if, if I am starting up my own fintech business today, what steps would I have to take care a target? And if you have to acquire this customer, not just for today, but also keep the customer for 2025, what are the things that I can do today from SME and startup world perspective? Anish, if you're on mute, you can unmute. Yeah, so I take a step back uh, in terms of the fintech evolution that actually happened uh, earlier, the services which is being offered by the banks and then uh, customers were uh, you know, finding it, I mean, they're not very happy with the kind of the experiences. And then when FinTech started actually building on those services, they find that, okay, an incremental delight when compared with what it was earlier. But now since FinTech itself has evolved, of course, it's a combination of FinTech companies and banks joined it together, the expectations also have actually changed a lot. So if I had to actually start the business today, I really have to look at what the customers are looking for. Now, today's customers are looking for uh, more uh, ongoing uh, ongoing value from the services which they uh, sign up. They're looking for an omni-channel, anywhere in real time kind of an experiences. They're looking for a delightful uh, uh, experience in terms of the way in which they get the customer support or they de deal with the customers. And they're also looking for more personalized moments. For example, if there is a, a small business which has got like a, a one lakh rupees li lying idle on his account, can the system automatically suggest him like how, how can we actually you know manage his wealth better basically or in terms of uh, uh, he uh, going to a uh, rather than waiting for the going to a bank with a border resolution to change his uh, uh, what do you call the access to his uh, giving an access to his uh, other director can he actually manage that better on uh, on that and more importantly SMEs are also looking more from uh, value in terms of how can they automate their finances, how can these tools help them grow their business while, you know, managing finance is just one part of it. How can it also add incremental value in terms of the growth? So these are the few things which I will look into if I had to start today, uh, you know, into a fintech business. Brilliant. Thank you. I know, uh, you know, when, when, when all of you are talking, you know, what, what really comes into my mind, the first disruption in India, the digital disruption that has come in, um, demonetization really fintech really came into the uh, you know rescue uh, uh, and again if you look back and in the last year, years of since then um, and in the last three and a half four months how fintech industry really stood up for the challenge um, and embarked and helped consumers citizens in whatever form that it can um, so a, a great role for all the startup ecosystem and smes i think the, you touched upon some great points thank you anish for the perspective you know, Shiv, I just want to uh, draw you in to the conversation, you know, from a from a lens of a CEO, if you're a founder and a CEO, uh, what areas would you invest um, 
effectively in the target, right? So you've got to invest something today for a future of customer tomorrow. Um, so are you in the mood to invest? Uh, and I'm sure you are. Um, want to get that perspective about what are the core things that um, companies investing and what are the CEOs are approving at this point of time in the technology space? Sure. Hi. Um, so I think that we, we should draw a distinction between the, the first wave of fintech, let's call it from 2016 to 2018. And now we are heading into the second wave and, and the third wave of fintech. Um, as Anish said, in the first wave of fintech, what happens is that you, the, the fintech companies, the startups are filling a gap, which was not being addressed earlier, right? So from, from the lending perspective, since we are a, we are a lender, um, the, the first wave of fintechs are addressing new to credit, right? People who have not been uh, given access to credit earlier. Now, when you're new to credit and you have not had access to that product earlier, you are very grateful for whoever comes in and gives it to you. You have nothing and suddenly you have something. And so you're grateful, right? Now, we have all, as a fintech industry, we have benefited tremendously from this so-called market beta, right? So uh, fintech as a whole has grown the target uh, consumer, the target customer is very happy to be given something that he or she didn't have before. But now we are heading into a stage and certainly by 2025, we will be at a stage where market beta is not going to be enough. You will have to identify very specific market alpha, right? That, that you as a fintech company, you as the CEO of a company are providing to differentiate yourself from the other uh, offerings in the market. Today, differentiation or so far, differentiation has not been as important, right? Because it's a rising tide raising all boats. By 2025, that's going to be very different. Today, we are providing as an industry, we are providing a necessity, which means that the consumer is happy getting something. By 2025, it will become a choice. So the consumer will have everything that they need in FinTech, which means that the incremental product offering will have to be well differentiated, will have to be very focused, and will have to provide a significant difference over what is already available. And I think what is going to change is that so far the fintech industry, and again speaking from the perspective of a lender, the fintech industry has benefited from the incumbents, the behemoths of the space, the banks, the large NBFCs, basically ignoring the growth of fintech because it has been relatively irrelevant to their own growth and to their own market share. But already by 2020, we are seeing FinTech making a dent into the market share of incumbents. And by 2025, that trend will either have accelerated greatly or the incumbents will fight back. So as a startup or as a startup CEO heading into 2025, you have to be prepared for both of those things. You have to be prepared for a much more discerning customer who now demands much better service and is no longer happy getting the basic services. And you have to be prepared for the large, deep pocketed behemoths who know how to survive, right? Let's not forget that they have built enormously successful businesses who are now ready to fight back in a very significant way. The third thing that I would say is important for a CEO today looking forward is that technology is not a panacea. Technology is an enabler of of very good things, but if not handled correctly, technology can be a double-edged sword. So what do I mean by that? It is very easy to go out and become multi-channel, right? You, you roll out technology, you have a chatbot, you have an automated IVR system, uh, you have a customer portal, customers can, can hit you from 20 different directions, right? But that can be a blessing or it can be a curse. It can be a blessing if, if it really works as omni-channel where everything feeds in together, every, every system talks to each other and feeds into a single source. But if it is multi-channel where your chatbot is not really talking to your customer portal and your customer portal is not really talking to your automated IVR, your customer is going to get extremely frustrated very quickly because they will be giving the same information to three, four, five different points in the company and very soon they will leave and go away.
<clears throat> that's a that's a fantastic summary shiv i, I really love it in fact it 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 made me to just to realize and remember uh, the recent zendesk benchmark report so we we are a cx uh, you know software provider so when pandemic really hit and we said okay we got to look at the pulse of customers and consumers and provide that insights and benchmark report to you know businesses to 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 do the right thing for the customers and one of the thing that you said is came in uh, i think the customers do realize that um, it is affected them and it's also affected the business so there are a lot more lenient with the businesses um but repeating information across multiple channels is the biggest challenge i think it is the second biggest reason why a customer will become disloyal and leave you um you know uh, you brought a very very important point thank you for bringing that uh, perspective shape you know uh, you you also said there are there are you know uh, the startup ceo to to large companies out there and one such you know we have a couple of them in in, in the panel let me bring in that perspective also uh, see if i because i want to bring you in here um you know when you, when when i go to conferences when i talk to different consumers and businesses and ask them if when a cx comes into your mind um, you know what are the brands that comes into your mind like top of the mind so amazon you know four to even seven out of the time 10 times it comes and say you know what great providers of uh, cx so i'm sure um you know that doesn't come very easily i'm sure you've done um, you know years of research great amount of technology uh, all that you know make you what you are today and what you will be tomorrow from i want to ask you this question about what what role do you see uh, technology playing in in delivering some great and exceptional customer service i think she've talked about great experience if you don't have great experience um you want to customer become loyal uh, disloyal and they leave but Amazon is doing something great. Would you would you want to share some personal insight also from your perspective from Amazon Pay, uh, what you uh, been doing um, in delivering some great CX? Sure. Uh, thank you, Katie. So uh, as you said, uh, as we think about right next five to ten years, uh, it's really the, the technology and uh, and machine learning and other capabilities are going to play a really pivotal role, right, to serve that consumer. and and i would uh, put that into a few different uh, buckets right the one key now uh, that where tech can play is around around digital and instant so now the consumer is expecting that hey i want it completely digital no paperwork no human interaction and i want it instant so gone are the days where we could you know wait for a 5 days 10 days to get a offering right so we want it digital we want it now so with that uh, i think this is where tech can play a really huge role on uh, serving that customer uh, for digital and instant solution and it also requires us as an industry to come together uh, and leverage our capabilities uh, so it requires deep integration right with uh, multiple providers because each partner bring uh, its own strengths and this is what our philosophy and ethos are even at amazon pay that you know we work we work with our partners to bring those solutions to customers the second thing uh, i would say is you know because this customer not only for onboarding and uh, but also if they uh, any self serve right anything they want to get service uh, is it's really important to say hey uh, how can i serve them where they never need to call me or they never need to visit me right and how can we really provide end to end solutions in a very simple and intuitive uh, fashion um you know to customers at amazon you know we swear by the fact that you know the best customer service is uh when that when the call never comes right so so that's the second really key part the third part is we are dealing with a lot of data right here uh as a fintech right so it's really important that using technology so that the customer it's really the customer is at the center of uh, all of their data uh, and then the consent framework are are very seamless so that customer really understands and and drives what they want to do uh, about their own data and information so uh, that's really the third uh, i would say important topic where uh, the technology can play a really pivotal role and and one last thing i would say is that as we now see uh, you know more and more adoption of digital payments and digital financial products it also comes with accelerated frauds right accelerated uh fraud trends and and you know and this is where as an industry and, and as well as the regulator we play a really important role on how do we connect 
uh, one with each other and then also with the central database in a way that we can prevent uh, those those uh, frauds and those trends and in a way you know we see this as a way that if we can do that you know by preventing bad actors we actually serve good customers better and and lower cost for them right so so there are multiple ways i would say where technology is going to play a, a pivotal role um, and and to serve this customer so um, those were some of my thoughts brilliant because thank you again uh, I'll, 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 I'll again reference back to some of the report like benchmark report that i reference for zendesk you know what it sees with clearly across industry is self service or um, it, it is the highest uh, consumption so far and apparently self service is frictionless service that customer can get the service when they want how they want uh, they decide the delivery of the service right and frictionless that provides a great customer experience so you know from a technology providing perspective low cost uh, low touch technology can do a job and customers are happy i think you know that's really um, encouraging to hear uh, amazon actually really pivots on to some of the technology which actually scales and that provides a great experience and higher c set brilliant thank you um, uh, very much vikas uh, let you. me draw in um, himant now um, you know himant i i i, I with with all these expectations changing i think covid really condensed the transformation that any industry can go through um, that means it also created customer expectations um, you know uh, and adoption of those some of those um, you know either technology or the new norm has been setting now if i have to ask you like how do you see customer experience evolving let's say from 1 3 5 years Uh, five years, I know it's a very far, but if I, if you at least can give us some some trends that are emerging and what you're seeing in um, in the industry, that would be really appreciated. So, you sure. know, I think that's a very interesting question. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. Okay, cool. That's a very interesting question. I'd like to like we step back and look at you know I think in the context of India and you know, a lot that I'll talk with me with the flavor of digital payments, whether that phone pay, I think you know that is what we've seen very closely. For the last four five years, but uh, if you look at it in the context of India, you know there is this. There has been I've always been a problem of you know this problem that I say in the terms of reach and use. Uh, how do you reach millions and millions and millions of Indians? And once you reach to them, how do you get them to use? You know, how do you get them to bring anything that you want to give them into their day to day life? So there is this always been problem. You know this uh, you know continuous problem that you faced around. creating the reach and once you've created the reach you know how do you get them to use i think linked to that is this entire cycle of you know adoption and engagement anything new that you do or anything that you do it goes to that cycle where customers initially adopt it and then you have to be you know get them into this continuous cycle of engagement which means that you know you have to get them bring in a shift in habit bring in a shift in behavior which is a sustained effort uh it needs a lot of you know communication education bringing up new use cases really deepening going deep in the lives of customers being being very relevant to them so i think this you know and this in the in the context of what's happened in india in last you know i would say last 5 7 years uh, maybe is this power of uh, you know power of three things the power of identity the power of payments and power of data um you know i i had this point in mind and i also heard you know nandan also talk on the same lines in fact in fact he's created a lot of all this the power of identity comes from you know the other uh, you know stack not just that even the digital kyc right now the way we are seeing digital kyc evolve you know uh, way vikas just spoke on you know how customers are finally finding it easy so they have the power they're not dependent on anyone they have the power to prove their own identity it's not about showing a paper and it's changing very fast the power of payments with imps and upi you know with customers and to be able to remit money instantly across the country to any bank account holders in 5 seconds and finally the power of data i mean the entire uh, you know the consent architecture or the way account aggregation framework is evolving or maybe just the data that's available in the the you know usage of the smartphone that he does while you know everyone will think you know uh, they are seeing data but it's the customer who's finally holding the data with him so you know that is how you really have to see and when you look at in this context when you look at india and india is i think you know many countries within country it, it's not just about one india the yeah, i would say maybe you know you look at it as india one at the first 100 million 110 million customers then maybe india two with the next 100 million customers 
and then you really reach the bharat which is the nearly a billion people and each of them you know are at various stages of evolution uh, you know need various things to be addressed in their day to day life across all use cases i mean it's not very universal you can't create a universal solution for a country like india a uh, smartphone user and a feature phone user i mean there are 2 to 300 million feature phone users which you've not even touched so how do you solve for them if you have to solve for so you know in all of this context i think customer expectations are going to be you know and evolving and each of this segmentally will evolve in different ways i think to solve for uh, the biggest thing that we are right now seeing is this entire you know connectivity and convergence you know i would say connectivity is really pushing convergence in a lot of way we've never even imagined in our lives and you know uh, we will be deeply connected we will we'll be uh, we'll see a very deeply connected customer and hence as fintech will have to be adopt we will have to ad- adopt ourselves to be really relevant to their lives in the way things are changing i think uh, for the customer to meet the expectation you will really have to be ubiquitous in anything that you do and you will have to be you know create a ubiquitous uh presence for yourself in being able to address needs that are relevant to them customer interactions i think we all just touch in past i think uh, you know it's not just chatbot but intelligent response systems it's not just about now being you know uh, uh, being reactive it has to be proactive i think the information now has to flow in the reverse way it has to be you proactively telling customer what's going to be happening in the services that you're going to be providing versus him waiting to you know for you to respond i think the third uh, aspect of this would be uh you know in the way customer sees customer sees everything very interoperable in their life with convergence they see it as very they love open ecosystems we have seen that in the way we have created our business i think you have to be very open in the way you are dealing with the customer to be able to meet their expectations uh the couple of other points that you know come to mind is this entire sensorization of payments i think you know in the way we see biometric evolving voice evolving there will be alternate means that will grow in the way i mean new devices new systems will come in and uh, you know in that sense in each business will have to think like say for example if you have to authenticate a transaction you know do we use voice do we use biometric how do you solve for where it becomes really simple for customers and they would be really expecting this it is for us to really gauge what uh, really solves it right and you know evolve towards that and i think finally last point uh, is ai i think way ai is developing uh, maybe not one year but 3 years to 5 years from now we're looking at very very intelligent systems growing up and you know those intelligent systems will be far more predictable will be far more powerful for us to be able to deliver superior customer experience i think they'll also go a long way in helping us solve for you know what we cast touch in terms of say fraud uh, you know ai will really help because you'll become far more intelligent in being able to identify your customer identify the transaction identify a whole lot of things so i think uh, it's going to be a mix of all of this uh, to be able to really solve for customers expectation you will be really be have to be ready with good distribution be ubiquitous solve for customer interactions uh, bring in ai look at sensorizations of you know look at biometric or voice to solve for be interoperable and you know create a very open ecosystem oh brilliant uh, i think i think these traits are so important um, and relevant today it will be continues to be relevant uh, down the line i think some values that great values that you shared him and thank you for those um you know this also made me to just to you know refresh my memory and I'll probably bring in um shiv here shiv you touched upon uh, omni channel multi channel you know talked about uh, you know uh, uh, telephone talked about chatbot and we are seeing especially in the last 3 uh, months the adoption to some of the messaging technologies that the customers are embarking on um as a, as their preference of interacting with businesses um namely in india whatsapp is highly penetrated and used uh, we are seeing that um in from the benchmark report uh, taking that cue just want you to see if, uh, what you are seeing within the industry your perspective but at the same time if i also request you to give a couple of traits looking and defining a consumer in in 2025 fintech consumer in 2025 so I'll, i'm asking you two things uh, shiv here um, new channels adopting uh, converging uh, and fintech 2025 consumer how do you define those thanks kt um, so i think the distinction between the fintech consumer today and the fintech consumer in 2025 is that today there is a fintech consumer right these are you know uh, broadly speaking they are early adopters they see fintech as 
uh, interesting, new, they see it. And I mean, that has changed. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking maybe a couple of years ago. Today, it's already, there's mass adoption to some extent, right? Um, but the evolution of, of technology into a business starts with early adopters who do it because they want to be at the cutting edge of, of whatever uh, innovation is happening, right? And then over time, the early adopters are joined by, to the extent that the early adopters have a, have a good experience, they are joined by the mass market. And the mass market doesn't really care about what is the technology powering something, right? They care about the experience that they have. So if they get the best experience from something that is non-digital, they will go with non-digital. So the only reason why digital survives is because digital provides the best experience to the mass market, to the individual who doesn't really care about what it is that powering the experience as long as the experience is good, right? So by 2025, for sure, and already we are, we are there to some extent, the technology will have to be ubiquitous, as, as Heyman said, but it will also have to be invisible, right? So today we see technology a little bit at the forefront of things, right? It's technology first. As, uh, as Bikas said, video KYC is, is big. It's, it's an innovation. People are doing it for two reasons. They're doing it, one, because it is, uh, you know, it's, it's contactless and it's COVID times and nobody wants to have somebody come into their homes and bring a physical envelope and, and you know, uh, that's passe right now. But also because it's cool, right? You want to be able to say, hey, I just got on in, in front of a computer and my KYC was done and ha ha, look at you. Last time you tried to do that with a bank, it took you three weeks, right? But that is going to change. And it's going to change in a way that people are going to say, they, they're going to revert back to what is the experience that they're looking for. And the technology had better be invisible. The technology cannot be in your face. So when we think of it from, from the lender's perspective, what I mean is that today, for instance, people come up with, you know, the, the idea of FinTech is, am I in the lending space? Is, am I a personal lender? Am I a consumption lender? Am I an MSME lender? But those distinctions are going to go away. And to Heyman's point of, of satellization, what is going to happen is that people are, people are going to expect to have their experiences financed invisibly in the background without it coming in and impinging on their lives as they live it, right? So all of this is gonna to have to become background processes. Credit is gonna to have to become a background process which powers consumption. Um, when you, so for instance, and this is already happening as Vikas knows, you go to Amazon, you, you, you buy a bunch of things, you're looking to check out, at the point of checkout, you have an immediate option. Do you check out and pay with your credit card do you, or do you, do you EMI it out for nine months or 12 months. It's not a process. It's not something that you have to think about and go through. It is an impulse purchase in some sense, right? And I think that is what is going to happen over the next five years for sure in a lot of different aspects of our lives where technology is going to become ubiquitous but invisible and powering experiences that are going to then drive what gets adopted and what doesn't. Brilliant. Uh Superb, uh, Shiva. I love the summary that you did. Um, I think that doesn't require any further words than what you just explained. Thank you. You know, I'm just looking at um, the time. We got about two minutes, um, and we got a bunch of questions coming in from uh, participants. So I thought I would use the opportunity to, um, you know, surface those questions. You know, because I have uh, one of the questions that sure. you know one of the participants have asked. Uh, question is, what is in next in financial yeah. services from Amazon Pay? What else is coming? What is cooking? What we can expect? Yeah. No, uh, thank you. Um, so, see, uh, at Amazon Pay, our philosophy is really about you know bringing the customer at the center of it and work backwards, right? Now, when we started our journey at Amazon Pay, uh, we saw the digital payments were full of friction, right? And how can we uh, really innovate? Um, you know, uh, and then provide those convenient solutions to our customers. And from that journey, you know, then we continue to expand because we see this opportunity that, you know, to go into bill payments, recharges, you know, to, to travel to other categories and and so forth. And, and it's really about, you know, to not to say that, you know, I want to do everything. It's just about picking up the areas where 
either customer tell us that I, I want more and I want it now, or either we identify the opportunity. So, so just putting, this is our philosophy. This is how we've approached things. Uh, now, I don't, you know, uh, I don't provide any guidance on future on what we would do and what we would not do, but it's just how this is our philosophy. And, and with that, you know, you will see us, you know, uh, uh, picking up areas where we see a biggest need. Brilliant. Thank you. Because and you know, we're running out of time, but you know, uh, I think I think the organizer was so kind that we could take one more question because the questions are pouring. I think keep them coming. Uh, if I could all you know request organizers to collect all the questions, uh, I would request the panelists to answer it offline to provide them. I think we're more than happy to do it. Anish, I, I want to get this question to you. I think this is uh, one of those questions that I think that you would be best as a fintech. How should I approach building a product today? For the future of consumer, um, it's so relevant for you and your industry that you operate in. Right. So um, I'll, I'll, you know, it's not that easy to answer a question first, but uh, I can talk from the customer angle because it's not only about the customer and the product. There are also since uh, fintech is dependent a lot on the different other aspects like the regulations, the compliance, the banking partnerships, which has a huge impact on what you are going to build. Right. So uh, you know. From a uh, customer perspective, it is straightly fair forward. I mean, these are things which we generally talk about, right? In terms of uh, how relevant is your solution, in terms of what value that you bring in, and especially when you're looking from five years from now, the customers would be already aware about the fintechs. And em as embedded fintech is a terminology where fintech gets embedded those things, uh, consumers would be aware of what he needs from a fintech. Uh, unlike today, the early adopters uh, versus the early adopters today, right? So one is about understanding those needs. For example, more niche focused uh, solutions would be relevant. For example, for a millennial, when it actually wanted to go for a banking service, you will specifically focus on somebody who's actually serving those needs, basically. Or an SME would, or an MSME versus a little more evolved SME would actually go to a service which caters to that part. But more important thing is like for this to grow the uh, base foundation, which is our uh, the partnerships which we actually make with the banking, uh, the fintech financial institutions, or in terms of the compliance and the regulations, which would also taken into consideration when you're actually building for it. If you are not able to, if you may have a, a better idea in terms of uh, creating the best user experiences, but then if you're actually depending on the uh, regulations or the partner bank, and if you can actually give that, if you're not able to provide that experience, then the entire service fails basically. So in short, this is what, you know, the, uh, I know it's very high level, but generally the two points which we need to look at. I, I think it's a brilliantly said Anish. I think everybody was looking at uh, embarking in this journey. It doesn't matter whether a FinTech startup or a different startup, Think about what is the competitive advantage that you want to build for your business. Right. That is super important and how that would differentiate. Uh, we see that like Shiv talked about and the rest of the panel talked about, we're seeing that in 2025, by 2025, all these industries will merge into common expectations and experiences would make a difference and dif you know, uh, differentiate. So lead with CX as a key differentiator for business to be relevant, not just for today, but also for the future. With that, uh, I know we're running out of the time. I just want to say uh, to the great panel that I had, thanks to Anish, Hemant, uh, Vikas, as well as Shiv for the great insights. We would have loved to take more questions, but we got to end uh, here. I want to say thank you for this great opportunity to moderate uh, this panel. Over to you, um, to the host. And thank you, Katie, for hosting it wonderfully. Thank you to you as well. Yes. Thanks, Katie. Thanks, Katie. Thank have you, everyone. Uh, thanks. I know, Katie, what a great job you did. We had to close it within the stipulated time. Uh, I can tell you I'm still getting requests for questions, uh, almost uh, 15 to 20 more. I agree with Katie. If the panelists are okay, we'll send the questions. Uh, maybe on the social media platforms, we can answer them. I'm sure, just like me, all the panelists and the delegates have enjoyed it. Heartfelt gratitude to our sponsors, AWS, IDFC First Bank, PhonePay, Zendesk, and PayPoint. Thank you once again, all the panelists. Uh, hope to see you at the exhibition or at the other sessions. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone.